Welcome back into a night in for the red and white. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks, and uh, celebrating uh, the uh, gifts that you give to the university as scholarships. That's where all the money that we raise tonight is going to scholarships for our student athletes, and it gives us the opportunity to reach out and bring in great athletes like the one I'm getting ready to talk to. From Miami softball, outstanding pitcher Courtney Veerster joins us. Courtney, thank you so much for taking some time to join us here. Um, let me go back and, first of all, ask you what, what brought you to Miami? I mean, when, when you were being recruited, I'm sure you were recruited by several schools. What was it that, that brought you here? I would have to say the biggest reason that I was drawn to Miami was obviously the campus and the facilities and the athletic facilities are all beautiful, and um, especially at a mid-major level, it's we, we can compete at... Um, that higher Division One level, and at like a Power Five level. Um, so I think that these facilities definitely are at that level, mm -hmm. and that's the level that I wanted to compete at. And then also the people at Miami, like the people, all the staff members, all the the teams, the different teams, like just how friendly and supportive they were of each other was mm. was really cool to see and i could tell that it was genuine yeah so. absolutely now when you were back in school when when did you start playing softball <clears throat> i started playing softball when i was seven seven mm -hmm. when did you realize okay that's my sport that's what i want to do probably when i was about 12. really and um, uh, a girl i played with her dad had told me um oh well you'll make a really good first baseman knowing that like I wanted to be a pitcher right. and that's what I wanted to do from that point on I my motto has just been to prove people wrong right and um, I didn't always throw the hardest it wasn't always the best um, but from that point on I worked really hard to prove that person wrong and then continue to prove different people wrong along the way the mechanics of softball pitching just amaze me because obviously you go from day to day to day can pitch it doesn't destroy your arm mm -hmm. tell me how hard you worked on those mechanics not only when you were seven and twelve but still working today oh every single day every single day um hours uh, i remember when i was especially my freshman and sophomore year that that was the biggest, um, those were the biggest years for just like learning and developing for me. And I would go into the, our indoor facility and just spin. Mm -hmm. Cause I was told I would never be able to spin the ball. I just threw hard. So I spun a spinner like to myself and there was no one else in there. I just spun the spinner over and over and over until it finally clicked. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to progress from that and then work on the next step for that. Right. Um, so a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> that's, that's just fascinating. It really is. Um, let me take you back and, you know, we're celebrating 50 years of Title IX. And, you know, you're in a generation where if you go back, that's the point where players really started to make big progress when you were young, making big advances, not only at the college level, but also in the junior highs and everything else. Did you look back or do you think back that, you know, you maybe had some people that you would have, you know, not idols, so to speak, that you really looked up to? to help you get to where you are? I really, really looked up to the very well-known pitcher, Jenny Finch, yep. and she came out with a book um, called Throw Like a Girl when I was in middle school. And I read that book like from cover to cover, uh -huh. and she talked about just like her experiences. And you know, she went on to play at Arizona and did really well and had a um, world championship. And, and then she went on to play for Team USA and got the first you know, gold medal for Team USA for softball. Uh -huh. So just seeing her and what, like I feel like I, through that book, I got to know her personally in a way. And I could relate to a lot of that, you know, with like being out there in the yard with your dad and mm -hmm. doing this and that. And then just her constant battle and fight to get women the appreciation that they deserve, like especially in softball. Here's the tough one. Do you look back now and think, I'm gonna be one of those people? I definitely did not at the time. <laughs> at the time, I did not think I was capable. Um, but once I got to like high school, I was like, okay, okay, like this is doable. I think I can do this. Like it's yeah. definitely a goal. And then, yeah, yeah, it's coming. Absolutely. To be. Looking back on your time here at Miami, and again coming back after an incredible year last year for the softball team, we're hoping for the same thing again this season. Uh, what stands out as your favorite or maybe proudest moment in your time here at Miami? Um, I'd have to say just 
I'd have to say the MAC championships, mm -hmm. um, especially since they were the first regular season MAC championships. And just, and I, I couldn't say one or the other. I would say both because they were done in such different ways right. um, with, with such different teams and capabilities. So I think that would definitely have to be the proudest. Absolutely. Sure. What do you credit your incredible success here to? I mean, we talked about the hard work. What, mm -hmm. what else do you credit that success to? Um, I think <clears throat> my parents from day one um, have been super, super supportive of any sport I tried, you know, whether it was volleyball, basketball, softball, like, and they traveled everywhere. They tried to get me on the best teams that they could. Um, spent a lot of money, you know, throughout middle school, high school, traveling and getting that exposure for college coaches. And also my uh, high school softball coach mm -hmm. instilled just a lot of very good habits in me um, that we here at Miami call like championship habits. But it was really cool to just be introduced to that and start um, working on those and developing those in yeah. high school. Um, and then coming in, I felt like I had a little bit of an advantage um, over maybe some other people because I had those, that coach and my parents that are so hard on me, but also very supportive at the same time, so. Yeah, I understand. What's your favorite part about being a student athlete at Miami University? I'd say just the support that we get um, from other teams, from other coaches, and just the incredible staff. Like, it makes it so much more fun, and being a Division One athlete is very hard, and it's very time consuming, and. Um, physically and mentally exhausting, but when you have those staff members that are just, that go above and beyond for all of us as individuals, it makes a huge difference. Absolutely, and finally, what does the future hold for Courtney Veerster after Miami? I, um, I had some thoughts about potentially playing professionally. Mm -hmm. um, that's still something I don't, I don't, not too sure about because for softball, it's, it's a lot more difficult, right. um, but I, because I was impacted so much by the staff members here, I'm really interested in getting um, involved with student athletes. And my, I was able to get a master's degree this year, and that's mm -hmm. going to help a lot with job opportunities. Absolutely. And um, yeah, just somehow be involved with student athletes academically, I think, is mm -hmm. going to be the route I take. But I'm not super sure yet. There so. you go. Mm -hmm. Very good. Courtney Veerster joining us here. Wish you the best of luck, not only this season, but obviously beyond that, you're going to be great at whatever you do. Thank appreciate you. It. I appreciate it.